for it's pretty important study. quotation. It's all right. It was made in a pamphlet by a fellow who later headed up a society. Let's say it was not a later, dumb, right then. A dumb statement. The Birch hmm? Society was formed in '58. Hey, Why are you all now, the John Birch Society, still answering for a statement like that? Why didn't the Birch Society say, "Look, our founder made an asinine statement. We don't pay any attention to it, and go on to the future"? Why is the John Birch Society? In his phrase, now considered by an awful lot of people who will say, okay, Jerry Falwell, moral majority, new writers, okay, don't like him. But all of a sudden, when you mention the Birch Society, everybody recoils. Why well, is that? The, t the reason is, uh, Tom, of course, we haven't gotten into what the society is. Instead, we have tried to, it's a sort of a classic effort of a straw man that's thrown up uh, where the society never took a position. The society never stated anything about Eisenhower one way or the other. It was never a position of the society. Was it a problem for the society that its head for 25 years was the man who had made that statement, and his head is not that now? Well, part of the problem is, uh, Tom, the, uh, Pat, the actual statement has not been quoted. Mm -hmm. And if anyone wants to take the time to read the politician with right. the footnotes, they can only read it and judge for themselves. Uh, but that's not a position one way or the other of the society. And of course. Another p small problem is that Mr. Welch did not resign. Uh, actually, this was a move of transition of leadership of which he was one of the individuals in uh, actively making the transition. He has well, emerged as a chairman emeritus right, and right, continued Were you hurt then? Well, I mean, I want to get to the point why the John Birch Society is differentiated from other new right organizations. You can say Conservative Caucus or Nick Pack or, or Conservative Digest, and people say yes, no, yes, no. But you say the Birch Society and there's a recoil. Uh, even among conservatives who will say, no, no, don't call me a member of the Birch Society. Now, why is that? Is that partly due to the fact that Bill Buckley's National Review, <coughs> I think around 19, 1964, read the Birch Society out of the conservative movement? Have you recovered from that? Well, I think Bill Buckley founded ACU in 65, partly mm -hmm. to do that. Uh, elements within National Review have also, beginning in 65, uh, I think very dishonestly, took a very strong tack against the society. The, Society would actually be termed more of the old right. I think the right. definition of the new but right why, would be vigorous and they, most vigorous. Okay, but why? I mean, I don't know where you disagree with, uh, with, with the new right people, but why are you all, why do you carry around this tarnish, this taint? Well, let me, give, the you people a, that, let people, me give you another reason why you carry around you the, the taint. I'd be glad uh, to give you the answer. Mr. Pat, Mr. Welch. The reason is because uh, the society is the only organization in America that is organized at the grassroots level with paid coordinators, with chapters in the communities all across the country. Conservative caucus. Uh, not with chapters, not with a paid field staff uh, all across the, the but country. That, that's organization. And so the result is that uh, this is the one group, I think, that those who would radically change America seriously fear. And a tremendous campaign was launched in uh, December of 1960. Right. Uh, to move to discredit the John Birch Society and, frankly, launched uh, initially on orders coming out of Moscow. Well, uh, Mr. McDonald, I'm not a conspirator. Uh, I think even Buchanan would vouch for that. Uh, well, but you uh, are Robert, a Robert Welch. Foreign relations, Robert Welch. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I'm a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. Is that a conspiracy? You, well, you've certainly... Well, it, Let me just tell you what Newsweek yeah. says, that, says this. The John Birch Society considers communism only one arm of a national of a master conspiracy in which socialist American insiders are plotting to establish world government. Now, it also says, and here's Director John McManus, that's your public relations director, saying that former Secretary of State Alexander Haig and CIA Director William Casey are two of these master conspirators who are plotting to establish world government. Now, what do you say? Uh, you know, that kind of silly, asinine statement is what makes, pe makes people laugh at the John Birch Society. Well, Tom, I'm sure being a long-standing member of the Rockefeller apparatus uh, and as a member of the Council on Foreign Relations of long-standing, you're fully aware that you, there is an elitist core in this country that has seen value in subsidizing communism or protecting communism. It has? Sure. You're accusing me of subsidizing communism? No, no, I'm saying because that there I happen is, to belong no, to a no, to there a is an elite core. Study no, that, group? No, no, wait a minute. There is an elite core in this country that has dominated American society. Well, I'm not one of well, them. The Trilateral Commission. The Trilateral Commission. Council on Foreign, Council on Foreign Relations. State Here's Department, I suppose. Well, let's face it. They've dominated the State Department for 40 years, mm -hmm. and uh, pretty much openly All so. right, but what are they trying to do? Well, their about? objective is to try to bring about a gradual transition in our society, a 
dissolving of sovereignty and a moving steadily to the left on the political spectrum. Well, who are the they? Belief, the elitist groups that I mentioned, particularly key individuals and policymakers and the Council on Foreign Relations. Is the International Monetary Fund part of this? Well, I would say the International Monetary Fund has certainly been set up for the purpose of facilitating that transfer of sovereignty and transfer of wealth on the road. Right, we elected Mr. Conservative. Let me just finish the point, right. because otherwise we're going to have a lot of un unanswered questions, that you are looking at a group that has worked to bring about the dissolution of national sovereignties on the road to world government. And certainly uh, you're familiar with the uh, local professor, Carol Quigley, who has been part of your club, in which he admitted all this. And he said in his book, Tragedy and Hope, the only thing I disagree is that we've worked to keep it a secret. And you see Arthur Schlesinger, Jr., writing way back in 1947, says, yes, this is the hidden policy of America. But we can't tell the American public because they're too unsophisticated to see the Who, value. What is the instrumentality of world government? What is the instrumentality of all the things which you say about Arthur Schlesinger? That's the silliest statement I ever heard. He well, never made anything like well, that. Well, let me suggest that you read the May-June issue of the Partisan Review of 1947, Tom, and you can read it for yourself. It's called Arthur Schlesinger Manifesto. Arthur said there was a conspiracy Oh. A conspiracy oh, to he promote didn't communism? Oh, no, he didn't use the word conspiracy. He said the objective oh, is to bring about... Well, it? let me finish. I'll, I'll tell you. He said that the objective, the secret policy, which we can't tell the American public because they're not sophisticated enough to see the value, is that through a steady result of erosion of new deals, we bring the American society steadily to the left, All right. and through a sound concept of benign containment, we merge into the vital center of the socialist left. Those are his words, not mine. Right, you think what, John Kennedy ask, was a member of that conspiracy? No, no, let me ask you this. The uh, World Federalist Movement in the post-war era contained a lot of people who eventually broke with it, and a lot of people thought the UN, in the post-war era, looked toward world government. Sure. Indeed they did, up until 48, 49. But a lot of them said, look, we were utopian. That's over and done with. We can't move. And a lot of them came in Kennedy's government. Uh, Schlesinger was in there when they were fighting uh, in Vietnam, launched the effort in Vietnam. Schlesinger was behind the Bay of Pigs. In other words, look, isn't there some move that occurred in the post-war era that now has been dissipated because nobody believes in the utopian ideal of world government anymore? Well, I think there are those that realize that moving straight from a prototype of the United Nations into world government perhaps is tactically impossible. But phasing out uh, increasingly national sovereignty into regional government uh, and phasing out sovereignties into international treaties in multiple areas the whole could be around. Er the whole movement toward, quote, interdependence. Yeah. NATO is, uh, so, uh, is part of the conspiracy? Well, there are certainly elements in NATO. There are people in, uh, in NATO who are very strongly dedicated to the defense of the West. Uh, but at the same time, you find in NATO a steady dissolution. You find a growing weakness as a uh, NATO policy uh, dominated by State Department policies that uh, has not worked. Well, it's uh, a regional grouping, and I think, therefore, it may be suspect by the John Birch Society. We're talking with Congressman Larry McDonald, who has recently been elevated, I guess, to chairmanship of the John Birch Society, succeeding uh, Robert Welsh. We'll be back in a minute. Welcome back to Crossfire. Our guest is the new chairman, recently named chairman of the John Birch Society, Congressman Larry McDonald, a Democrat from Georgia. Uh, Mr. McDonald, your your predecessor believed that the PTA was too left wing, and that uh, and the John Birch Society at one time tried to infiltrate it, as, or so he said. He used the word infiltrate. Are <laughs> uh, you still? Is that part of your program now? Well, I think when the PTA comes out in this program for the test ban treaty and when the PTA comes out for gun control and comes out for obviously national legislative programs that have been linked with liberaldom, uh, having nothing to do with education of our children, I think many people are wondering what in the world is the PTA doing, and that includes members of the John Birch Society. Well, I well wonder about you. Uh, public. I wonder about you. I looked you up. You're, you're, you're the biggest joiner that I've ever seen in the world. You belong, as I counted them, to 67 organizations among which are the National 